will have known about the great resignation which certainly has taken place over the past uh, couple of years. Well, now we've moved on to quiet quitting. Let's get a sense of what it is and what the implications of that are. Joy Deep Hoare, joining us from People and Culture Strategies. Joy Deep, good to catch up with you again. So what we've moved on from the Great Resignation, where, of course, we know that how tight the jobs market is at the moment. So what is quiet quitting then? Yeah, morning, Andrew. It's, uh, it, it, is the, it is the new phrase. You're quite right. Great Resignation dominated a lot of conversation, um, particularly coming out of, if we can say that, the, the, the pandemic and that, that return to normality. Quite quitting, I think, is um, really a twist on that same concept, which I think germinates from the fact that the the pandemic and the working from home and the the uncertainty and 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 in many instances um, and respects the, the lack of control that employers had as against what they traditionally had over how people worked has led to people rethinking fundamentally what work means for them. Uh, the nature of their relationship with their employer, perhaps the relationship uh, that they have with their leaders and, and colleagues and uh, exploring other opportunities and whatever else. So for many people, yes, that translated into a, a great resignation or leaving their organisations and perhaps leaving so at a much lower threshold of frustration or disappointment. Quiet quitting still taps into that same sentiment of whether it's frustration or aggravation or annoyance, but rather than someone resigning we see that quiet quitting happens where someone is responding to how they're feeling about their employment by just doing the bare minimum when it comes to their work. So they're not going to go the extra mile. They're going to do just the hours that they are required to do. They'll probably take their full breaks as they are entitled to. They're not going to be participating in those discretionary effort type activities. And and that is their way of either sending a message to their employer or to their manager or even to their colleagues that you know, they've had enough and they're only going to do the bare minimum. Um, but they're falling short of actually taking more decisive action and actually quitting. Yeah, but is that that comes with a risk, doesn't it? That the employer could uh, get annoyed by that particular attitude or do employers not have a chance, not a, a, they're in a difficult situation at the moment because they're struggling to find workers and keep them. It, it, exactly right. Yeah, I think that I think that is the real politic of the issue that this is only happening and allowed to happen because the nature of the market is such that a lot of employees are fully aware of the fact that if their if their manager or if their employer was to take decisive or significant and severe action in relation to that quiet quitting, they would do so at their peril because that might lead to that person actually quitting, and they know that uh, at least for for some time now employees have very much had. Uh, or, or perceived to have had the upper hand in that employment relationship. But one thing that I'd say about this is that um, while we have not talked about this and in the in the literature and discussion around this notion of quiet quitting, there hasn't been these kinds of analogies. Australia has for many years had laws and regulations dealing with what constitutes industrial action. And we typically think about industrial action being, you know, people going on strike and and, and blockades and things like that. But the actual legal definition here in Australia of what constitutes industrial action is where work is being done in a manner that is different to how it is customarily performed. So if you look at what quiet quitting is, then there's a really strong argument that those employees who are engaging in quiet quitting are actually engaging in a form of industrial action, mm. which is illegal and immediate grounds for an employer to take um, disciplinary action, including up to you know, the termination of that person's employment. The problem, though, is that employers will say, well, yeah, but that still gets me into the situation where I've got to fill a role and um, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. Jordi, we're almost out of time, but um, am I right in saying that this is more likely to be a phenom phenomenon that's prevalent among young or the young or, or those who are new to the workforce rather than those of established, perhaps older workers? Yeah, I, I think the, the experience of employers is that there are certainly a lot of patterns and uh, similarities in terms of the generations where this might be exhibiting itself. And that's not to say that it can't happen uh, at, at other levels or for people who might be slightly more advanced in their years or experienced in the workforce. I think the real issue for employers here is that um, they've got to call it out because the problem for you, if you're an employer and you're allowing this behaviour to continue, is that the people who are working around that quiet quitter are probably the ones who are going to experience the most frustration and they will think less of you as an employer 
and less of leadership in that organization if you're not seen to be doing something it takes gumption might take you to you know a, a lot of courage to face into the unknown and uncertainty of maybe having a, a, a difficult vacancy uh, to, to replace but employers have got to do it